Hi again, everyone. It's Leslie of Leslie Writes It All with another Strathmore Artist series, a uh, little project tutorial for you. And just going over the supplies, I will be using this Dalu Rowney watercolor set of 24 colors. It also comes in a travel size, a um, little compact one that has the same colors, it's just in a smaller form. Um, but I am going to be using the bigger palette because it's already nice and messy. And the watercolor paper that we'll be using today are these um, pre-cut Strathmore watercolor cards. Um, sorry, that's a little off screen, but these cards are already pre-cut and pre-scored and they're perfect for watercoloring. You just watercolor on them and it can be put directly on the envelopes that come in that same set and you can just mail these out. I forgot to mention we want to have our pencil on hand as well as a kneaded eraser and a journal or some scrap paper to practice before we actually um, put paint onto this card. But let's just jump right into it. I'm going to start by lettering. Um, you can choose to write a family name on the bottom if you're going to be gifting it to a family friend um, or family member. But I chose to just write spread joy and I'll show you the style that I'll be I doing just that in today. letters for the word spread and then I just use some uh, calligraphy for the word joy and you'll see how we um, do it with our um, paintbrush later. And then this card is just going to be tons of little hanging ornaments. So I'm just trying to space out and see how I would like to place the circles. I do want to vary the larger circles with some um, smaller ones and then also change up so they're not lined perfectly in a line. They're going to be staggered, some higher, some lower than others. And I'm also making sure to place some um, of the ornaments behind others just to give it a little bit more depth. And after I'm done sketching, I always take a step back and make sure I'm happy with the placement of everything and the centering, spacing um, before we move on. If um, you notice, I am freehanding these circles um, so they're not perfectly round. Um, but if you have something that helps you make circles, um, please feel free to use it if you're more comfortable with that. I'm just adding the caps of these ornaments on, um, kind of in the center tops of each ball and um, just resketching and cleaning up some things. So like I said, if you have something that helps you draw circles, washi tape is kind of a great size for this. Um, you can use the inside and then the outside to vary the size of the ornaments too. And then once you're happy with everything, um, we're gonna lighten our pencil markings with the kneaded eraser. And now we're just gonna draw the um, strings that these ornaments are kind of hanging from. I feel less confident about drawing straight lines than I do about circles, oddly enough. So I'll be using a ruler. Um, just try your best to make them perfectly um, like uh, parallel to each other so that you know you're not getting any wonky directionality on your um, on your ornament strings so I'm just kind of eyeballing that part but choose the center of the ornament caps and then just go straight up from there And once you're happy with the sketch, I mentioned earlier that we're going to be lightening the pencil markings with a kneaded eraser. A kneaded eraser is an eraser that's just really soft and you can roll it over your page like this. It won't um, completely remove the pencil markings. It'll just lighten it. So it'll be very hard to see the guidelines um, on my page while I'm painting. And that's the whole point. You basically don't want these pencil markings and the, the sketches to be visible in your final project product so it'll act as a guide you'll see that as I'm painting I'm painting in the places where the circles and the lettering you know was when we sketched it but it looks kind of invisible to you right now on this screen and I gotta say sketching and planning is not my favorite part of this process it's actually the painting so I'm really excited to finally add some color to the page I'm gonna be doing um, a rainbow theme or motif going from left to right. So I'm gonna be keeping this really easy for you. If you remember, you know, your elementary school Roy G. Biv, we're gonna go from red, orange to yellow. Um, you're gonna do 
greens and blues and then we're gonna just end with like a purple and pink color at the end so that's how I remember it's the easiest way for me to um, paint in sequence of the rainbow and it keeps the colors very um, cohesive that way so you see I, I started with some pink that I laid down and then I'm coming in with some orange because we don't have actually enough ornaments to assign to each color um, but also I think it keeps the ornaments kind of interesting to have this like rainbow um, look to it and again I like I mentioned earlier you can't really see these guidelines you can barely make out maybe some of the circles um, but I can see it pretty clearly so as you're painting just make sure that you can still see your guidelines um, but it is faint enough that maybe you know you won't see it in the final product I decided to add a little bit of white paint as I'm going in these ornaments to kind of give it like a cool galaxy feel as we are gonna go through the rainbow and then next to my pinkish red orange ball, I'm going to be painting one that's kind of more of the orange and yellow variety. So again, I started one side with the orange um, and then I'm going to be finishing the other half of it with the yellow. Um, you can use lots of water and let the colors interact. I love when they bleed and blend into each other. That's really one of the best qualities of watercolor. Um, so play with these colors because it is really beautiful when you have the mix and you kind of create unexpected colors. And I did want to create two distinct looking ornaments. That's why I waited until the first ornament was a little bit slightly drier before painting next to it. Um, if you paint um, really close together when the ornament is still wet, it's going to kind of blend together and you might not get as clear of a distinct um, separate circle. Okay, so you can see the smaller ornament I painted with the yellow and very light green color. And then I'm moving on to a green and bluish turquoise -y color. Again, dotting in with some of that white to create kind of a, a galaxy um, soft look to these ornaments. And feel free to switch up these colors. Like if you wanted your ornaments to match the color ornaments you have on your tree, you know, play with these colors, play with the ornaments. These, this tutorial is just to give you ideas of what's possible if, for, you know, whatever you want to paint th this holiday season. I just, you know, really love playing with different colors and maybe non-traditional holiday colors. So that's why I try to incorporate rainbows and maybe other colors that don't get to have as much fun during the holidays. And as you can see, I'm finishing off with the last one in that purple pink color, tying it kind of back to the first colors that we used. And then um, when I'm doing the lettering, I'll be going using the same order of the colors. So I'm going to do some red and some orange, some yellow. Then we're going to do greens and blues and then purples. And I do apologize for that camera angle. I didn't realize until a little bit later that I didn't really get to show you much of that S, but I'm kind of doing a very light block letter. So just going over the penciling of the lettering, I'm just creating a mono lines, the same thickness throughout for the word spread, but I'll be doing each letter individually in a different color. And then for joy, I'm doing kind of like a brush letter. Um, style, which means the down strokes, that's when your brush is moving physically down the page, are going to be a little bit thicker in the stroke. And then the um, up, up strokes, which is when your brush is physically moving up towards the page, are going to be thin strokes. So you can see that as a brush lettering style for the word joy. And if you have metallic paints, you can go ahead and use that too. I'm just using this yellow ochre color, which I think is kind of a nice, like dull, it's a non-metallic, but hints at the gold. Um, so I think it's a great color to use for these um, ornament caps. And I apologize, I did this a little out of sequence, um, but I wanted to show you that if you just wanted to leave your ornaments kind of like this cool galaxy looking ornaments without adding any other decorations, you can go ahead and just add the um, basically white paint that's going to kind of mimic the reflection of light on these balls, um, these glass ornaments. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, I apologize, I should have <laughs> discussed adding other decorations beforehand but if you wanted to see what it looks like without any 
additional um, decorations on your ornaments. This is what it looks like um, just with just the white paint showing the reflection of light. And this is just kind of how I paint. I have a sketch and you know something in my mind but as I'm painting I might discover I don't really like that. Let me add something here or take away something there um, to get it to where I want it to be. So unfortunately my painting is kind of a little bit of a process of uh, trial and error. So you'll see what I mean by me assessing this and I wanted to add a little bit more um, but if you're happy with this and you don't want to I mean, risk ruining it which I do all the time then you can just leave it here but I did decide to add a few um, extra you know um, designs on the ornaments which means that I had to kind of work around the white that I already added so in the event that you want to redecorate your ornaments you can always go back over with the white paint um, so I'll, sh I'll be showing you my, me doing that process again later. But in the event that you wanted to leave it, you can see what it looks like. But I'm just going in um, over the dried ornaments with additional paint. And that's a process called glazing. So I am using um, kind of the same colors that I did, but now on dried paint. So I'm using that bluish green color that you can see already in that ornament and just painting it on top. And now it's creating a layer of color so it adds a little bit more depth and um, you know color to your ornaments and again I'm sticking with colors that I've already used in that ornament to um, do the decorations on top so Blue on top of blue is a very safe combination. Sometimes when you do this glazing process, the color underneath distorts the color on top. So if you keep these colors in the same in the same family, then you'll see a more truer representation of you know the color as it is. And I really have fun during this process. I kind of just play around with different shapes and styles and look at ornaments that I've seen in the store or that I already have. And I kind of just, you know, try it. And this whole process is fun. And this part I'm totally winging because it was not part of my sketching. But I thought that the painting could use a little extra something. So here I am just adding it. Once I'm happy with the designs on the ornaments, not all of them got designs, but once I'm happy with it, I'm going to go back into my white paint and you're going to use very little water. So I usually don't um, paint directly from the pan of color, but in this case for the white, I am making an exception. I don't want to dilute the white. I want it as bright and white as, as bright white as possible. And I really want it to pop against the colors of the ornament. So I'm using very little water dipping directly into the pan, the white, uh, the pan of white paint. And I'm going to paint these little stars which is um, one long hash down and then two smaller ticks across um, to get that kind of glittering effect that you get when light bounces off these um, ornaments and I also love that we painted these ornaments in kind of a galaxy style because adding these little dots and little stars kind of adds to that galactic or galaxy feel to it um, even though they are like orna little ornaments and I mentioned earlier that I have to go back and retouch up the um, the light reflection spots because of the designs that I added but um, paint does dry a little bit lighter than um, than what it looks like when wet so you may have to go back and do this anyway even if you didn't add any designs to your um, painting and again i want to reiterate how little water i am using i'm just getting enough water on that white um, pan to mix the color and i'm kind of removing any excess because you really want a fine line for these little stars um, you don't want globs of it it's really just 
a little bit of glistening light bouncing off of these balls that you want to capture when you're painting these stars so very light hand if you don't feel comfortable with the round brush um, I think I'm using a three or four um, make sure that you switch to a one and that's going to give you the smallest possible um, tip I'm just using a very light hand just gently grazing the paper as I'm making these stars and dotting around to um, you know hint at light that's bouncing off of these ornaments and if you love this effect of the um, little stars popping you know if you want to repaint this I would suggest making your ornaments even more saturated in color and you're gonna get a lot of popping um, from the white contrasting against that I kind of painted in more like a like a pastel type um, style which means that I added a lot of water so you're not gonna get as you know bigger contrast between the ornaments and the stars so either go back again and add the um, white in in more detail or um, make your ornaments a little bit darker and more pigmented in color so that you get these stars to really pop and I'm gonna go ahead and find any um, black mono line pen I'm using this one to just draw in the lines for the ornament strings you can choose to paint this um, I have something else I had planned for this um, mono line pen so it's just kind of pull it all together when you see it on the strings at the top and then um, I'm going to also use it to emphasize some of the lettering at the bottom so I really wanted the letters to stand out a little bit so I'm kind of just going in and very loosely tracing the block letter so i like that it's a little off center you see a little white peeking in there um, i just think it's kind of a fun style to use i love seeing it not quite perfect um, but it is going to give some of the color uh sorry the lettering a little bit more definition especially when i use colors like yellow that don't really show up as well this outlining is going to make um the lettering a little bit more visible and this is a design choice by me if you liked it the way it was um feel free to just leave it however you prefer it um this is just a style that i've been playing with and i've been having a lot of fun with so i'm just showing it to you guys to give you more options And this is pretty much the last thing that I'm going to do to this card. Um, I do love adding things, but at some point you're going to step back and say enough is enough. I've added enough detailing and I've added enough extra stuff that I'm finally happy with the card. So um, you can choose to also highlight the word joy. I decided to do kind of a drop shadow. So for a drop shadow, you just want to imagine that there's a light source somewhere. I'm imagining it's on the upper uh, left hand corner. And so this drop shadow is going to be visible for anything um, that is going to be past or behind that. So behind that letter Y, I'm just going to create a little shadow with the um, pen and that's going to just hint at it making so or giving it a little bit more this dimension card. i don't know if you're happy with it but i love that um we played with a lot of different colors and different ways of design so um i'll be mailing this one out and i'd like to see if you give this one a try too so don't forget to tag me i'd love to see your work